Hi everyone, Paul at ISM. Welcome to another step-by-step -step video build before we get going today. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you click the little bell notifications to get notified of all our latest videos. Click the like button and leave a comment. I do read and reply to all the comments and appreciate everybody that takes the time to leave a comment on the channel. And of course, if you scroll up in the description, there's a link to a big long list of all the items I use in my videos. So if you see anything, you should be able to find it in there. Okay, so I originally started this kit nearly three months ago and with a few issues with the decals that I ordered for it, it's only just coming to fruition now. Ten weeks later it is since I had the issue. You'll see where the decals um, went yeah, wrong, should we say. Um, so one second now, watch the video, make your own mind up. Uh, if you had any experience with myself, let me know at the end of the video. And we'll have a little chat when we come back. But this is a great kit from Tammy. I reviewed it back um, three months ago. And it looks a fantastic kit. I've been eager to build it. And I picked a fantastic bolt scheme in a very, very striking colour. So I've been waiting and waiting to get back at it. And here we are now. Here's part one. So let's crack on and let's get started. Okay, so let's start off with the instruction book. We've got our marker ready to pick out all the parts that need painting in the body colours. Um, so there's going to be parts that need glued in place, parts that need spraying separately, and this is the job of what we're doing here. So the interior is going to be painted white, uh, with the exterior in the luminous uh, fluorescent green slash yellow, I suppose it is. So we're marking off all the parts again, the priming, prepping and painting first of all. But mainly, we're looking at the interior tub, the cockpit, uh, chassis, and the roll cage that they be painted white. And then we've got all the numerous body panels, like this front bumper, uh, the main body itself. And we're going to have a look through the instructions, see what we can and can't assemble as and where and when, um, and what is going to require uh, prep before we go to primer. So everything I've circled here needs painting before decaling. So we're going to sort them all out, prep them all, get rid of any uh, sprue points, sprue marks, sand them all nice and smooth, um, and then we'll mount them all up once they're cleaned up and get them into primer. So cutting off some of the parts first, so the main cockpit tub, uh, and then we're onto the rear spoiler. I'm not going to show all the parts being cut off because it's immensely boring, and you really don't need to see that. Um, you can see me do that in other videos like the Subaru Techniques Guide. But here, we're just cutting the parts off. Um, I cut away from the, the parts to begin with, then cut closer with the cutters, and then we're coming with, in this case, we've got a 400 customizable, which is one of my definite go-to sanders now. Um, you can cut them to any shape or size, and because they're hard plastic backed, they're excellent for sanding straight edges. So there we go, just check with our nail that that sprue point's gone. Onto the body, where we're getting rid of all the seam lines that are over the body itself. As always, they start front to back. A lot of them hide in body panels, so you don't need to deal with them. Uh, panel gaps, sorry. Um, but for any others, we've got a 220 sponge. Uh, we'll go over them until they're gone. Then we'll go over it with uh, the buffer. And then we'll hit it uh, with our sanding pad later to scuff up all the body. So basically, we get rid of the seam. We use both sides of the buffer, get it to a nice high shine, and then we're going to flat it back. So we've got a fully keyed... Uh, flat surface to accept our primer. Interior now, we've got all our roll cage all cleaned up, ready for assembly. Now the way I like to do these, you've seen this before, is we pop all the parts in the locating points and glue them together. We don't glue it to the tub just yet, that way we can paint it properly um, and get it all assembled and put it all in as one unit later to save messing around with CA glue or, or unsightly Tamiya glue later. I find this works very well. So just line it all up. Once you've got it all in position, hit it with some time you're extra thin, hold it for a couple of minutes. And once it's dry, you can take it out, mount it appropriately, and uh, prime it where you need it. So the front bumper, the body's all cleaned up. We're going to glue this in place. So the easiest way to do this is keep your fingers away from those glue points. Hold it together with the same pressure. Just touch the glue to it. You want it to capillary action through the part. 
and glue together without A, squeezing out any excess molten plastic, or B, getting on your fingers and leaving a nice and sightly glue mark you then need to work on. Spoiler, five pieces on the rear spoiler. You've got the main spoiler at the back, two side pieces, and two spoiler mounts as well. Refer to the instructions to make sure you get these the right, right way round. Um, once assembled, have a look, make sure it looks okay. Again, be careful of any fingerprints. Uh, what I like to do, while the glue is still um, a little bit play, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Wet, I suppose. Um, I'll mount it in its holes on the uh, rear, just to make sure that they're the right width apart, and then take it back off. So here I am now, scuffing the body. I've got, um, what have we got here? It's a 3M pad. Um, there are different ones now. You'll see very, very soon from myself and Lee. Uh, but this video is old. This is literally like nearly three months ago I filmed this. Um, so I was still using this one back then. As you can see top right, you can use one of our 220 sponge sanders. Uh, preferably a worn one to do the same job. And all I'm doing is going around, removing any excess glue marks, any flaws on the finish. And basically taking all the shine off the plastic. So there we go. There's the body ready. There's all our interior, cockpit tub, door handles, wing mirrors, the chassis, roll cage. And they are all ready. And the spoiler for primer. So we just need to scuff this one up as well. So scuffing it up, um, not only does it remove some contaminants from the surface, if you've got fingerprints or what have you, any unsightly glue marks, it also gives the primer a key. Um, to adhere to the surface and that goes whether you're using a water-based or a lacquer-based primer or enamel um, I find it helps and that's how we do it toothbrush our invaluable tip from my buddy Norm in all the panel lines get rid of any dust or accumulation of particles in there to clean it all up once we're happy with that we're going to mount it to our Tamiya stand um, no real secure mounting point on the body on this one, so we're going to secure it with some Tamiya 18mm uh, masking tape. Just line it up so it's nice and level. Put a piece right in the middle, push it down top and bottom, burnish the edges in, and there we go, mounted. We've got some UMP airbrush cleaner. In English, that was UMP airbrush cleaner on a nice clean piece of kitchen paper. Now, I use shades from Mazda. It's a very high quality kitchen roll, kitchen paper. It doesn't fall to bar when it's to bit when it's wet. It holds together. It leaves no dust behind whatsoever. If you use a cheaper one, you may get issues, but I've got good faith in this. I'm just rubbing all over the body to remove any contaminants from the surface, be it fingerprints, oil residues. You've been eating a packet of crisps while you've been modeling, whatever. We want to get rid of those because it might have a negative effect on our primer. Drilling holes now to mount parts. We'll drill a small hole in a pretty inconspicuous part of the spoiler. Put a cocktail stick through it. A little bit of glue on a cocktail stick and place it inside the mirror. As you can see on the roll cage, put a cocktail stick in one of the preformed holes in the side. And basically this just gives us nice secure um, mounting points for spraying. Because there's nothing worse than spraying something. And it falls off or rolls across the floor or, you know, really annoying things like that. Uh, cockpit, tub on a bulldog clip. And here we go. We are in the spray booth. Now, like I say, this was nearly three months ago. And I'll be honest, I forget which primer this is. Being me, it's either UMP White or Tamiya White out the rattle can be canted. So, I can't really tell which one it is because I kind of spray them both the same. They both go on with mist coat and then I do a wet coat at the end. So it's either one or the other. Either one is fine. I switch and change all the time from one to another for no particular reason at all other than I feel like using it that day. So three or four coats of that. Let it dry. And then we're coming with some Tamiya TS26 white, which is one of the spray cans from Tamiya decanted. Uh, this is because Gravity Paints recommend putting a gloss white under the fluorescent paint. I assume it's because it gives it a nice smooth finish and a nice uh, base for the green. So we're just going to apply three coats. The primer would have been exactly the same. A couple of mist coats and a wet coat of primer. And the same with the TS spray as well. A couple of mist coats and a couple of wet coats. So it's been allowed to dry for probably 24 hours. You can see we've got a nice glossy white finish. We've got our beautiful 
Tamiya Anti-Static Brush. And we now have our Fluorescent Yellow from Gravity Paints. And our Apex. So Apex is set at 18 PSI. It's a 0.35 needle. We've loaded it up. And we are going to put on plenty of nice light coats all over the body until we get the colour we desire. Beautiful paints of Gravity Paints. You still have to be careful with any of these automotive style lacquer paints. Nice thin coat to the key. If you go too wet, that is not what you want. You do not want wet coats with these paints. They are very, very hot. But this one, the Gravity, is the most forgiving out of all of them I've used. The most consistent, the best colour matches. And they are by far one of my favourite paints. Right up there with Tamiya LP and TS paints. So, first of all, we're just going to go round. We're not going to get this covered in two coats. This is going to take a lot. Again, I'm sorry it's been that long. I cannot remember how many. Uh, but it will be several. I will at least say between six and eight coats. It's a very thin colour. Um, it's going to take a lot of building up. But time... Patience is the key here. Do not be tempted to put it on wet or rush it because it will have a detrimental effect to the finish. So I'm guessing we're probably on our third coat here. And as you can see on this coat, the colour's really starting to build now. It's beautiful paint. It doesn't need high pressure. You could go lower than 18. You could probably go down to as low as 12. But it sprays absolutely beautiful. really does go down really well and it's the perfect colour in my opinion it's absolutely spot on for this and there we go that is god knows how many coats of paint seven or eight easily and we've got some nice depth to that greeny yellow now very very striking colour you wouldn't miss this thing in the dark that's for sure and again just making sure we've got all the areas all the recesses any bonnet scoops um, vents, uh, any angles, whatever, um, we need to make sure we get them done. Now, at the beginning, we need to paint the spoiler the same colour as the body because of the decals we had, but we'll get to that in a minute. So here we go, there's the body all painted, been allowed to dry for 24 hours. You can see, beautiful colour, really nice, really vibrant with the lights on and off. We're ready to see some decaling, and we've got our Indical decal set which i bought all the way from the united states to america and i'm gonna have to try and be pretty diplomatic now um all i'm gonna say is i will never buy another set of decals from indicals ever uh you'll see one of the reasons in a minute and to be honest the main reason is the customer service so we have a bit of an issue with the decals um they don't look great um they're not the cleanest prints Everybody I showed them to, including professionals in the trade, said they look like cheap inkjet printer decals. So I thought, okay, um, we'll go with it and we'll see what happens. So I put it on and you'll see what happens in a minute. So I had an issue with the decals. I contacted, I think it's Michael at Indicals. And fair play, I'll admit, he offered to replace them free of charge, which is their guarantee. With the problem I'm about to have, I didn't want that to happen. I didn't want a replacement set. I literally wanted my money back. Um, I was not happy with the product. I was not happy with how they went down. Um, this, for me, is a pretty high-profile build, being a video build. I don't want it to look rubbish. I want it to be the best job I can do out of it if I can. Um, and I knew Blue Stuff were releasing a set of decals imminently in the future. So I literally just wanted a... Um, refund sadly i was told it was my fault what happened i'd used too much um what was it too much decal solution off the bat and i'd rushed them and forced them and everything and let you all got on here is micro set no soul no setting solutions um to get the decal on just like i do with every other decal you can already see it's split on the top three quarter on the left you can see green poking through so i thought okay maybe i can touch that up let's see if we can get it down properly and as you can see i'm not really applying any force i'm just using the brush as i do with every other decal and this is our normal solution so this is just as strong as microsol it's an industry standard decal solution 
And as we can see, as we get the decal solutions on, it cracked. The decal cracked and split and just looked absolutely awful. Um, so yes, um, that was it. You can see a big crack there, all the green showing through. Um, I did nothing different I did to any of the decals here at all. Um, just in my opinion, not very good quality decals. That is my opinion. And I said to Michael uh, in decals, who threatened me with his attorney brother and all sorts of stuff over this, um, I would do a review of the decals. So in my opinion, I don't recommend them at all. I would avoid them. And if you can see how stretchy this is, it's crazy. Not very high quality decals in my opinion. But hey, get yourself some, make your own mind up. I know plenty of people have used them without issue. But here we go. So 10 weeks later, uh, my blue stuff decals arrived about two weeks ago. But I was working on other projects. So I had to put them to one side. Straight off the bat, much higher quality decals. I've used blue stuff before. I've never had an issue. We get a really nice color call out uh, decal placement sheet, which we didn't really get with the indie cars. It was some rough pictures, if I remember right. Beautifully printed uh, decals. You can instantly see the difference. And we set to work on getting these decals on. I had a lot of faith in these, but I was still a little bit, well, gun shy, I suppose, with the calamity I had last time. Um, but like I say, if, if you've used IndyCal, let me know. I know plenty of people have and not had an issue. I did, sadly. Um, I was told I'd done some things wrong. I was swore at. Threatened with legal action. All sorts of stuff. Um, and this is my kind of review. Though I could have been a lot nastier and done a whole separate video. But I said all along, I will post about them in here. So I will be avoiding them for the near future. So, Blue Stuff Decal. Instantly, you can see the difference in this decal. Much higher quality. Um, I think these are screen printed. Um... I'm not sure, to be honest, but much, much higher quality decals look so much better before you even get them on. And they were a joy to use. I had no issues whatsoever getting them on, getting them in place, getting them set. And they were absolutely beautiful to use. Very, very nice. So, yeah. Let me know your thoughts on that one. Have you used IndyCal before? Have you had any issues? It seems to be a 50-50 mix of people who have and haven't. Um, so I would really interested to hear your thoughts in the comments below. I was very disappointed. I'll be honest. After a bit of back and forth and there and then, I did get a refund. Fair play. They did refund me. But not until I was insulted a bit. Um, threatened when I didn't really need to be threatened. And all I said was, I'll give them a review. If I don't get a, um, my money back, I'll just give them a review. And I think I have quite fairly. Um, I could have been a lot nastier, but I haven't. So let me know in the comments down below if you bought them, if you had any issues or any problems at all, and did you get rectified. If you had a spare set, an extra set, for the ones that went wrong, I don't think it would have been a problem at all. But for me, that was no good. Um, the decals weren't high enough quality for me. Like I say, I want to try and do the best job I can on this. It's a video build for you guys and girls out there. And for my display case, I don't want shoddy looking work in there. So as you can see, beautiful. These decals are gone down no problem at all. Using a finger to manipulate them around the front windscreen. No issues at all. Very, very forgiving. Nice and easy. High quality decals. So yeah, go to Blue Stuff for your old decals. So we've set that in place uh, with the brush and our fingers, and now we're going to hit it with some decal solutions. That's how easy these decals are. They've gone down without any solutions on yet. Um, so this is going to set them in place. So a little bit of UMP normal. All over the decal. We'll get it set in place. And then continue on with the rest of them. So for the rest of them, there's a lot of them to go down. I'm going to do a quick uh, music uh Musical interlude, I think we'll call it, whilst I put the rest of the decals down.
And there we go. We're all decaled. So what reality took three, four minutes there. It took me a good few hours to do, probably two or three hours in total. But they went down fantastic, and it's a great-looking scheme. So we're going to give this a panel line wash. I did contemplate mixing a bit of grey and black, and I thought, you know what? It's a nice light -like colour. We'll just hit it with some grey. So this is Tamiya's grey panel liner. We're just letting the capillary reaction carry it around. The decals have been drying overnight, so 24 hours later. Um, and we're just going to apply a panel line wash all over the body. Um, where it's required, any recessed or raised areas given a wash. You may need to go over it twice to get the depth. It can take a couple of goes, let it dry, then hit it again. And then it's a case of coming back and using some odorless mineral spirits. A cotton bud and a bit of tissue to gently remove any of the excess wash and then again i let the decals and the wash dry for another couple of days before we come back for 2k and lo and behold here we are two days later so we've got some gravity spain clear we put a nine mil of the clear uh three mil of the hardener and then we've mixed them together we then added three mil of the thinner Mix it together again. Make sure you mix them between each um, addition. And then we filter for a 190 micron filter. And it's into our apex. We're a 25 PSI, 0.35 needle. We use our anti-static brush to get any dust off the surface. And then spray it over air to remove anything else that might be there. So we're going to give it our taco first. So we're going to give it a light go over all around. Give it a semi well semi gloss satin sheen that will then dry for 10 minutes go tacky and give us our nice base for our first wet coat as you can see i've dampened the floor of the spray booth got a brand new filter in we've got brand new kitchen paper down everything else is out the booth it's all been wiped down i'm double gloved i've got sleeves on i've got my full face respirator on as well and there's our first um tack coat back with our first wet coat now we want to get this on wet but we don't want to get it so it's absolutely flawless just yet we'll get that on our third coat which will be our second wet coat so we're just going around putting a nice even coat on ensuring all the angles have been gotten top and bottom surfaces underneath the wheel arches around the windows and just inspecting everywhere to make sure we've got a uniform shine all the way around it's a lot quicker after you've got the tack coat down to do this because you don't have to be as careful or precise. Um, so we're leaving 10 minutes between each coat. Um, we're covering it up each time, as you'll see in a minute. If you want to watch this in full, I have a separate video on using this 2K Clear. Um, it is on the channel. You go back and have a look. I go a little bit more in depth. But for this video, we're not going to linger around. And as you can see, we're getting a wet coat on, but it's still not quite the high shine we normally get we don't want to push it too far because we've still got another wet coat to go on and we don't want it too thick so just enough to give it a wet coat knowing that we're going to come back in another 10 minutes and pop another coat on as you can see here's my homemade storage box a couple of clips in the bottom that holds the stand and then the box fits over the top i've drilled the sides and we have some tamia mesh on there for vents and everything is safe it doesn't move around and no dust can land on it 10 minutes later, we're back. The airbrush is loaded up again, and we're in for our final wet coat. So we want to go over this again. Not quite as heavy as that second coat, but just enough that we've got a flawless surface. Um, so what we want to see when we've gone over is no orange peel at all. That's a fine line between getting it right and going too far. If you go too far, you can end up with runs, and that's a nightmare. Um, and if you're somebody who likes to lead the finish out of the brush, it's going to look too thick um, I purposely put this on a little bit thicker than it should because I'm going to flat it at the end and polish it up so it will look a lot better but for now all we're trying to get is a uniform even finish all around um, with a nice glossy finish so if you're spraying it now and you look out and think oh there's still a little bit of an imperfection there or a bit of orange peel give it another light go over because it needs a little bit more of the product on there to get it to self level once you've used this a few times you'll get a lot better at doing it god knows how many of these i've done now probably over 70 odd and i'm finally starting to get the knack of it um but it's a fine line between going too far and not enough but literally if you can see a flaw a ripple 
uh, as long as it's not excess, you know, a run of paint, or you've got orange peel, just give it another pass over because you want it thick enough to self-level as it dries and leave a beautiful gloss finish as you'll see we have in a little bit. So I'm having a quick inspection all around, making sure it's all clear, and it is. Absolutely happy with that. I go back in its box and I then leave it in there and vacate the room for at least an hour. We'll clean up all the airbrush, we'll fully strip it down, give it a clean of lacquer thinner, throw away all this kitchen paper, the old filter, all the pipettes, all the uh, medicine cups, anything and everything that has had 2K in it goes in the bin, outside of the room, and we let it off gas for an hour because it then becomes um, dust dry. It still leaves a fingerprint if you touch it, but no dust should now settle in the finish. As you can see, we've got a lovely 2K clear coat there. A little bit thick in places, but that's just how I like it. I will flat it back later, and we'll give it a polish with our polishing system. Rear spoiler, obviously we did off camera with the mirrors. Door handles are not done. I will do those in a different kind of gloss later. Um, it's too fiddly having too many parts on the bench, so they don't need to be a massive gloss. I can get them with TS13 at a later date. But there we go. Very happy with that finish. We've got barely no dust, and there's one spot on the boot lid. So it shows my preps paying off, and I have some nice pictures of it here as well, which with the camera and a little bit less light, you can see the true color of this thing and how vibrant that green is. Absolutely beautiful. Um, I'm very happy with this finish. We've got a beautiful shine off it, as you'll see in a minute. Um, very happy, lovely color, lovely decals, and a great looking scheme as well. And we do the uh, obligatory out the window shot. You can see my back door outside. Beautiful gloss coat and a beautiful color as well. In this protective case, as you can see here, which is a modified um, plastic tub, um, I have literally um, bought this from a shop. It's been drilled out each side uh, with a hole saw, and then some of the mesh you get from Tamiya kits, I've, I've hot glue gunned them on the side so it lets a bit of air circulate through without allowing any dust. I then drilled the bottom of each one to hold a bulldog clip one side and then just a clip the other spaced appropriately so that they clamp um, the Tamiya stand in there perfectly. They are cable tied in and literally once the model is in there on the stand because I tape it to the stand I can drop that box to a degree. I can tip it upside down. It doesn't fall off and I know it's safe in there and it can sit in the uh, the model room until I'm happy. So I'll leave this now for probably at least five days to harden up, but because we're doing a video build, it's gonna take us a little bit longer anyway. So we'll be back with this near the end of the build to get it flatted and polished up. Okay, there we go. So let's start with the elephant in the room. And no, that's not me. Um, the decals, yeah, I've tried to be as diplomatic as I can. I wasn't very happy at the time, Complete waste of time and effort and three months of waiting almost for replacement decals. I'm not going to say anymore. I've said what I had to say in the video. But if you've had an experience with them, good or bad, let me know in the comments down below. I am interested to hear. Um, and it's a shame because they've got a lot of decals I'd like to use. But I will not buy them anymore. Not only because of the problems I had with the product. My main problem is with the customer service. As I said... They would replace them for free, and that's fine. And fair play, that's a good policy to have. But you have to offer the refund policy as well. You have to. It's, it's law in the UK. I'm not sure about the rest of the world, but it's literally, um, if somebody's not happy with the product, you need to offer them a refund. It's as simple as that. And you don't get aggressive. Don't swear at them. Don't threaten them with an attorney. It, it was just crazy. But anyway, thankfully, Bob at Blue Stuff brought out these decals, which were flawless absolutely fantastic decals i cannot rate them more um, than i can unbelievable i've used blue stuff before i think it was on a bike i did i forget now uh no issues there at all they went down great they set well they took the 2k well and they look absolutely amazing so thank you bob um i bought them and then they were about to be sent out and then they were recalled due to a printing issue that bob spotted i believe and not a printing issue an error there was something not quite right i'm not sure where it was and i had to wait another two or three weeks for them so it's been a big old long process but we're here 
Um, I'm very happy how this is looking. It looks absolutely stunning, beautiful, and I cannot wait to crack on. So there we go. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. The kit, I do read and reply to the comments. I had a massive backlog of about a month to reply, which I sat there the other day for about four hours and tried to reply to everybody as personable as I could. A few of you might got a few generic thanks for watching. I do apologise, but I can't sit and type every single one. Um, it takes hours to do, but I appreciate all the comments. Love talking to you guys and girls in the chat. Um, so if you've got any thoughts or comments on the build, let me know down below. And also, like I say, for the third time, any experience you've had of indie cars, please let me know. I'd be very interested to hear. So there we go. So, did I say anything now? Yeah, I've got another build I want to crack on with. Um, and I'm going to show you it, because I have shown it already. Um, it's one I want to do for myself, but it's also one I, one I want to do a video build of. And it nearly took the place of this, but I really wanted to crack on with this. So I'm tempted to start this and video build it as well. I've done that before, and it can be a bit of a nightmare. So I don't know. I really want to start that. I've got this beautiful kit from Rebel, which looks a great kit. A 66 Chevy Impala, and I chose that beautiful colour, which is TS41 on the top of my head for it. I may video build it and do them next to each other. Away they go. I'm thinking about it, I'm contemplating it, I haven't decided yet. I've still got the Yag Panther on the go, but I do want to get that car kit on the go because I've been eager to build that. So you might see another different video build run alongside this one because this will have to wait now. I don't like to release all the parts in one go, as you'll get three parts in a week. I don't like to do that. I like to do at least one a week. Um, so I've got the chassis and that to do. It doesn't take me that long to do. So it'll easily be ready in a week, and what that means is I have to then stagger what I'm doing as I'm done, and it's done dead quick. So if I work on something else in the meantime, I've got a piece of armour to do, but I really want to start that, so we'll see how that goes. And there we are. That is it. Um, so that's us for today. My Facebook messenger's going off, as it always does. Um, as always, check out upretail.com where you can buy this kit from. We have them in stock. Go over there and have a look. Check out Intensive Scale Model Facebook page and forum, my Paul ISM Facebook page for all my modelling work, Off Air Hangout group, and I'll have the bench page for the Off Air Hangouts and uh, the live show information and what have you. Uh, and of course, go over and check Blue Stuff, Bob's fantastic site. He sells a lot of decals, and uh, I can't recommend them enough. Absolutely stunning. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Make sure you give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Click the bell notification and please leave a comment. I do read them all. I do read and appreciate every comment. And uh, I will catch you all next time for either part two of this or part one of that. We'll see. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.